Hello everybody, welcome back to another Alter Tutorial video. Today we are doing this 9th edition Wrath of God. Um, it's a little bit played, I think it's got a little bit of a damage bit somewhere in the center. Um, but no matter what, we're going to cover it up, make it look good. We got our brushes, we got our Wrath of God, we've got our paints, we got some water. And um, yeah, we're basically doing a border extension today, so we're going to leave the text on it. But uh, we're going to try to extend the art over the borders and uh, as you can see this card is uh, is very light it's got a lot of light hues in it a um, bit of purple a little bit of black um, but most of it is light and because it's light it's a little bit harder to alter than uh, darker cards personally I feel like getting the colors right on lighter hues is uh, more difficult than ones that are darker so I'm gonna give this um, kind of like a medium difficulty it's not that hard but it's a little bit more fiddly than a darker card would be Anyways, let's get started. We've got our sandpaper right here, and we're just going to go over the borders that we're going to be covering up with paint. What this does is um, it just roughens up the card a little bit, so the paint sticks a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit better onto the card. And uh, sometimes when the card is real slick, the the paint will kind of slide right off. But if we if we roughen it up a little bit, the paint will stick a little bit better. Make sure we get all the dust off. Then we just kind of sand it off. You can see it right there. Get that all out of there. And with that going, we're going to get started here with um, trying to mix a color that is maybe not 100% accurate, um, but but we're going to try to get as close as we can with our first layer, our first base layer. So I'm grabbing a little bit of white, tiny bit of blue, and um, this brown umber color, and just mixing that up and see how that goes. And um, I'm kind of just working down the side of the card and see where this bluish hue could fit which is right here uh, kind of like at the bottom bottom third of the card both left and right it's kind of got this bluish hue to it I'm just gonna drop in some on it doesn't really matter if it's um, not a hundred percent accurate at this stage because we're gonna come back and, and layer it up more and more and as we go uh, apply more layers uh, we can get more accurate every single time so I added in a little bit more of that umber color to create, to create this um, purplish hue and uh, we're just applying that wherever wherever it's uh, necessary on these uh, purple kind of sides here. I added in a little bit of yellow to create a, a little warmer glowy effect uh, especially here at the top part that's going to be uh, fairly important. Because this card is so radial with uh, the, the centerpiece obviously being the circle, the explosion. Um, it's a little bit lighter where it's closer to the circle. And uh, that'll actually be here right on top of or just above that text box is where our color needs to be lightest. Going into um, a little bit darker of that purple shade. I'm going to drop in our base layer right here. Note how um, this card, this art, um, it's very gradient-like. So um, I'm mixing up the colors heaps every time, adjusting the color on my palette just a little bit, adding a little bit more blue, adding in a little bit more of that umber color, and then just applying it again. See if it uh, works for different parts of that card. Here I've got that uh, probably as dark as this purple is going to get for this top part, and it seems to be spot on. Just going to block that in a little bit around this... Um, this is top right corner and top left corner as they are the furthest away from our bright circle explosion so they'll be the darkest corners leaving a little bit more of um, a lighter hue over on the center above that um, above that text box just using the same old brush it's pretty flat brush uh, doesn't really it's very fluffy that's probably a fairly important tip if you want to make gradients and you want to make it smooth use a brush that's very soft because a softer brush is easier to blend colors with than with a stiff brush here we go with a little bit of um, a lighter color a little bit of blue in it um, I keep on using the paint that's already on the brush because that kind of um, makes sure that you stay within um, within your own kind of palette that you've created. If we're going lighter, however, 
it's a good idea to clean the brush, which is what I just did, because we're going into this light bluish hue. I wiped off all the um, the old paint because it was kind of like getting onto the darker side of things, and uh, made sure to wipe all the dark off so we can go back to light. If you have a light color on your brush, you can easily go darker, but having a darker color on your brush, it's not very easy to go back into light. So whenever you go darker, you can leave your brush dirty. Whenever you go lighter, you got to clean your brush a little bit. And this is our basically our second layer already, where uh, the border of the card is almost all gone. Um, and the more layers we apply, the less you'll see of the original border underneath. Here I'm just gently, very gently with the corner of the brush, just tapping in a couple of kind of glowy kind of clouds that come from this, uh, this orb of light or this explosion. Very gentle, not try not to put too much paint um, into these, um, these glowy clouds. Uh, definitely want to, don't want it to be like a thick blob. It's more like a faint, almost transparent kind of um, kind of streak. Here we go and uh, mixed up a little bit of black with uh, a little bit of umber that with the paint that was already on our brush. And we're going to try to make the color of the dirt that's uh, flying around here and the debris that's at the, more at the bottom of the card. And we're just gently pull in this paint across the border from left to right kind of trying to match the um, angles that are already depicting on the on the on the on the basically on the edges of the art the original art and we're going to take this color and go all around the bottom and uh, and these edges and this is just a rough kind of like first layer um, obviously we're a little bit more free here in what we want to do with it because there's no original art next to these uh, next to this text box so we can make whatever we want down here adding in a little bit of black make it a little bit darker for this very bottom left corner there's some rocks and stuff sticking out and um, that's basically our foreground of the original art and as we move forward and further down we want to be able to go darker in color than um, the colors that are at the bottom of the original art just because when things get closer um, there's a higher contrast that's just kind of like how colors work and how distance works in uh, in painting so as we go further down towards the very very bottom of the card we'll add in a little bit more black to get things darker and add up you know add a little bit more contrast to it there we go lots of black lots of umber With a fresh brush, this one's a little bit smaller, similar texture though, still kind of flat. Uh, we're going to try to get a little bit more glow going and cover up. I think the original layer that I put on here was a little bit too blue. It stood out a little bit. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more of a white neutral color and we're just going to drag this across left and right, making sure we especially cover the spots where the old original border is still a little bit visible. And because this is an explosion, uh, we can make these streaks from left to right, um, going basically away from the center of the explosion, and it will create this um, this kind of like stuff flying around effect. A little bit at the top here too. And these lighter shades really set those um, glowy clouds apart. Make them stand out, make them pop. And these are all very, very light touches, trying to minimize how much paint is actually falling off that brush. Don't want to overdo it, don't want to get blobby. Just gentle brushes, brush strokes. Add in a tiny bit of blue, tiny bit of umber, and um, we've set our highlights. 
we're just gonna go and make the color just a tiny bit darker and go across for round two and this is more matching to the neutral mid-range color that's already kind of on the on the card itself this kind of purplish brownish but mostly neutral white kind of color and we drop that in to blend in with the blues that we put in earlier and as we go further out we go darker and darker because the further away from our big explosion light source the darker it should be still fairly you know we're still working within the 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 realm of light i suppose like nothing gets too dark towards these edges but um, just a slightly bit darker than it is around the center of that explosion it's all very um yeah i'd say fiddly is the right word we're still we're working with a very tight kind of range we're not going from full light to full dark it's like we're working with light and then we're working with a little bit of a darker light if that makes sense adding in a couple of different shades of blue here on the edges and we're getting to the point where the colors are matched like I'd say a solid 90% it's getting pretty close with the original art not too far off and the hardest part about doing this Wrath of God is probably the gradients that it has um, I feel like acrylic paint is fairly hard to get gradients right um, there's some medium you could use but uh, here I'm just working with just straight paint and water um, here I got a little bit of a darker color and I'm trying to create these purple streaks that kind of come from this character being obliterated and we're trying to pull that in the same direction as the art kind of depicts so from right to left it's kind of um, how he's being uh, uh, yeah well destroyed I suppose um, all this debris flying around is trying is what we're trying to recreate and we go in a little bit darker too for this rubble that's flying around and I chose a, a basically a darker version of that purple blue more yeah purple blue color um, and just with the very tiny um, touch of this brush which is very um, what do you call it like spiky at the end I suppose like it's a very old brush it's all its hairs and bristles and stuff they're all pointing outward kind of like a spike a spiky kind of kind of look and if you just touch those spikes on the on the card it should be enough to release the tiniest bit of paint and that's how you create those thin little pieces of debris that are flying around here I've got a very uh, small uh, flat brush and uh, I'm just gonna try to paint in a little bit more detail of these rocks that are at the bottom so with this flat brush um, you can chisel it to make it sharp and then if you uh, pull from uh, basically horizontally uh, you can create the illusion of there's like all kinds of rocks and stuff flying around key here is very light touches and also chiseling the very edge of your brush if you make it round or press too hard and it gets all blobby and stuff then your rocks are gonna end up looking like um, well not really like rocks at all really so make sure this edge of the brush is really chiseled so you can make create sharp edges and that's when we pour, uh, pull horizontally and lay in all these rocks one by one we did a highlight color first or more like a mid-range color I suppose at this point and we're just gonna add in lots of black and a little bit more umber to create this shadow color and then at the very bottom of each of the rocks that we laid in we're just gonna drop in a little shadow same technique horizontal strokes making sure our edge of the brush is chiseled and because the lights coming from above from that orb of light explosion we want our shadows to be at the bottom of each of these rocks and that will set them apart horizontal strokes and the closer we get to the front the darker our shadows is going to be the more contrast there is drop 
dropping in a little bit of shadow here on the side. We're going to be going over these a couple times to create some, um, some depth in these rocks with different shades of shadow, I suppose, and different highlights. For now, this is like the basic um, sketch or layout. Tiny corner of the brush here. I'm just laying in a couple of more of these debris things. Um, you can use different brushes to create the same effect as long as you're um, just very subtle with it. Once again, the um, the brush is kind of chiseled, and I'm applying the lightest pressure you can possibly imagine, like not much at all. And then whatever kind of paint falls off that brush, that's what your debris is going to be. Don't need to overdo it. If you blob, you put down a blob. It's it's going to look a little bit iffy. Here I grab some red and some yellow and a little bit of white and um, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of highlight on top of these rocks that we painted earlier. So basically the light's coming from the top which means that on every top of this rock, the very top edge of it, we're gonna drop in tiniest bit of highlight. Same thing with the horizontal strokes, chiseled edge on that brush and the very lightest touch to let whatever paint fall off the brush, let it fall off and that'll be your highlight. No need to overdo it. And we're doing it at the top of the rocks because we got our shadows at the bottom because the light source from the top, shadows go on the bottom, and then our highlighted bit goes up the top of these rocks. Very light touches, don't want to blob too much. Ooh, there's a bit of a blob, we might have to cover that up later, that's okay. And we do that with every single rock we painted. Grab a little bit of umber, rub in the old whites and, and this tiny bit of blue that we put in earlier. And um, with that, um, I'd say a little bit warmer of that mid-range color, we just, every now and then, not all the rocks that we painted, but just a couple, we give a little bit more of a warmer tone, um, makes them stand out a little bit. Just here and there, wherever you feel like. Back into a shadow color. We'll just move into our shadows part two. We did a rough job earlier and I would just, um, every time we apply another layer, it'll help make these rocks look real and set, set each of them apart. Chiseled edge, making sure our brush is sharp. Very light horizontal or diagonal strokes at the bottom of whatever the rock may be. Don't want to cover up the highlights that we did earlier. We've got to stay away from those with this shadowy color. And if you do, it's probably best to cover up most of the highlight and may turn it into a shadow area instead. It's like here at the bottom. Good thing is once you've covered it up and you don't like it, you can always go again for another round of shading and whatever you don't like, paint straight over it. Here I am um, gonna go, I cleaned the brush, added in a little bit of water to make the paint a little bit thinner and uh, that way there's a little bit more transparency to the paint as well which means that if you put it on it'll blend a little bit with whatever's underneath cleaning the brush uh, we got we've gone back to our flat brush here um, going into a bit of purple using some reds and some blues and some umber a little bit of yellow in there too just gonna touch up a little bit of this color in the sky um, now that that paint has had a chance to dry, sometimes with acrylics, you apply the paint and it looks great. And then sometimes when it dries up, like 10 minutes later, it'll look a little bit different. So keep an eye on that. As the paint dries, you might have to 
adjust a little bit and add another layer depending on how things go. Well, would you look at that? At this point, I'm pretty happy with, with how it looks. Um, I feel like we've done a pretty good job in matching um, matching the colors in the sky, the debris is flying around, the rocks at the bottom look like they're, the, the contrast is right, as in whatever's closer uh, looks darker. So to finish this one off, I dipped this, um, uh, this skewer into um, a little bit of water, made sure that I took off the excess water from the tip, and we're just gently scratching off the paint that we put over this, uh, this text box at the top. And um, very, very gently trying to make the text box re-emerge from the paint that we may have um, covered it a little bit too much. That's okay, we can scrape it off using this, this cure. This is probably my least favorite part of uh, <laughs> of the alter process altogether. Um, I love the painting. The scraping off is a little bit fiddly. Um, yeah, you got to be so precise, but with a bit of practice, you'll get good at it. And with that done, we transformed this white bordered ninth edition Wrath of God into a borderless one. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. See you later. Mm -hmm.